Hey guys, how's it going? Today we're planting a bunch of beautiful fall plants in the ground over here on the west side of our property. Let me run over what I've got here in the gator. It's kind of like candy corn-esque. We've got some white and orange pansies over here. There's some really sweet yellow violas. Then we've got a snapdragon called Snaptastic Yellow. Uh, which I think will be really a beautiful. I don't typically use these, especially in the ground. So I'm really looking forward to it. We've got them out in the cut flower garden and they do great for cool season, uh, a cool season annual. So this one will be a really fun one to add to the kind of fall mix. And then I've got some pigeon white cabbage for bold, beautiful, bright texture and color. Um, so this is where they're going. We're gonna be planting underneath each one of the five maple trees that line our driveway. Now, typically we have these planted for summer uh, and those annuals usually go all the way through the end of the year. Like, well, not the end of the year, but you know, the end of the fall uh, because I usually have super tunias, super bina, alyssum, things like that, that are very cold tolerant actually, uh, but they didn't do as well as they have in previous years this year for a couple of different reasons, I think. One, we did replace the water system in here and in the beginning we didn't run enough drip. So I think they were a little bit struggling because they weren't having, or they didn't get enough water. And then also the trees are much bigger this year than they were even last year. So they're casting a lot more shade in this area. So I think we're gonna have to rethink what varieties of annuals we use here. Everything I'm using for fall, of course, these are about ready to lose their leaves in the next month or so. Everything will do really well in here. They're a lot more shade tolerant. Um, plus they'll be opened up to more and more sun as these start to lose their leaves. But I'm really looking forward to seeing fall color here because it's just something we've never done. So I did lay out the last, the area around the last maple. Let's go take a look at it. All right, so here they are. There are a ton of plants <laughs> underneath this tree. It's gonna be so pretty. I've got five, the five cabbage for each maple tree. I had enough to, I can't even believe I had enough to um, stretch them as far as we're going to today. But I think it's perfect just to have a little ring of them in here for that boldness. And then I did um, all the snapdragons back behind the cabbage because these will get 14 to 16 inches tall. They get about 16 inches wide too. I don't know if they'll get quite that big since we are getting colder, but they will put on some size. So there are 20 of them back behind the cabbage. And then I interspersed the orange and white pansies and the yellow violas just all over the place and i thought about you know maybe i should do it in a more organized fashion and kind of color block but i think having the whole mix just all these beautiful colors is just kind of a free look and very pretty um also i did want to mention we do have bulbs planted in this area. It's totally fi fine to plant annuals over the top of bulbs. I do it all the time. Um, typically when I'm digging my holes with my auger, which is what I'm gonna use, sometimes I'll run into a bulb or two and damage them. But most of the time the auger picks up the whole bulb and kind of kicks it out of the hole. And you can just grab that bulb and pop it right back down in the soil. Something to consider though, is if you especially live in a really wet or just a really wet climate, um, maybe putting thirsty plants, like plants that require more water on top of bulbs may not be a really good idea or like soil types that hold on to excess moisture um, because you know the likelihood of your bulbs rotting kind of goes up or the risk of your bulbs rotting rather kind of goes up. We're so dry here, I typically don't have any issue with that. So I did want to mention that also, I have been working on hedging up all of our boxwoods. Like if you take a look down this way, you probably see the shady area better. Uh, I think our videos are going to be a little bit out of order because I'm trying to do all of our boxwoods in the same video. <laughs> so it's taking me several days, like, you know, a couple hours here, a couple of hours there just to get it done. Um, but I'm so excited about these boxwoods because this is the first year that they're almost looking like a hedge. They're very, it's kind of hard to hedge, honestly, when they're not super full because some of them are a lot shorter than others. And I don't really want to take all of them down to meet the height of the shortest one. Um, same with width, you know, sometimes you'll have them that look like this, like really close together. And sometimes there's a big gap <laughs> right here. And it just takes time to get them all like into a really nice tidy hedge, but it's looking so much better. So I did want to mention that, that you're seeing that in this video, but you're going to see it again <laughs> along with all the rest of our boxwoods. So anyway, what I'm going to do is just get all of these things planted and then we'll take a look, see what it looks like in the end.
Well, that ended up taking all day. I thought this was gonna be just a morning project. I kinda had a vision of what was gonna happen. And then I made a little change, and that often happens when I'm starting in on a project. I'll make tweaks and stuff if it's not quite turning out how I want it to. And then sometimes it kinda derails the whole thing and ends up taking twice the amount of time that you thought it was gonna take. But I really like how it turned out. So you can kind of, well, you can't really see all of them, but you can see the pumpkins all the way down. So the pumpkins were a complete afterthought. What I did is after I laid everything out, out, I just got to looking at it and it seemed like so much so many leaves it was just there was nothing with a punch of color and I know that these aren't colored up all the way yet you know and had I planted everything how I initially laid it out it still would have been absolutely beautiful but what I ended up doing was taking away all the plants from in front so it gave it kind of a sharp clean edge up here um, and then we went to our local farm stand even though I've grown a bunch of pumpkins I have a bunch of pumpkins and squash out there but some are ready some aren't quite ready I didn't have enough to complete this whole project and I still like to support our local farm stand so we went and did that had a little lunch and then came back and finished all the planting so it's been a lovely day it's been a really fun project um, I do feel like I kind of wish I would have had like a little bit more cabbage maybe but once the, the uh, plants fill in and like the pansies fill in in between I think it'll be a really full beautiful look. So I ended up eliminating the yellow violas completely. They were a little bit too wild and mangy and I kind of thought that just having the yellow bee and the snapdragons would be nice. So we ended up with the yellow snapdragons, orange and white pansies, the cabbage, it's a, not a cabbage it's a kale I keep calling it a cabbage. Um, so that's the pigeon white cat kale for crying out loud it's been a long day <laughs> and then we've got a really fun mix and we kind of went with the candy corn theme um, with the pumpkins and squash as well so we've got the regular I think these are like jack-o-lanterns or howdens um, this is a actually a spaghetti squash called millionaire right millennium millennium millionaire, millionaire? Yeah. one of the two uh, I don't know how it's gonna keep out here but it's got a really hard outer rind is that right? Anyway, I don't know. I, I think it's a really pretty color. Now, I did not get enough white pumpkins. I do have some ready out in our garden. Um, let's take a walk down the rest of this. Take a look. All of these areas are slightly different in size just because of um, how the boxwoods, boxwoods have grown. Uh, and one of them down further, the, box, the tree rather, is actually planted a little bit to the left. It's not quite centered. You don't really realize that until you're trying to plant kale in a very even pattern. Uh, and then down here they just they all look the same I think we'll end up putting a nice little layer of mulch around everything just to cover all the drip tubes but I'll run out into the vine area grab a few little white pumpkins to tuck in to these groupings here but I just think it's such a fun look just because we've never done like I said anything fall out here and then this is the first one I laid out I love it Anyway, that's it. Really fun project to do today. And I'll wait until it's a little bit better lighting wise to try to get some pictures. I know it's kind of tough when it's dappled like this to see all the detail. And then of course, it'll look really fun in probably another couple of weeks. We are gonna get 37 tonight. So I'm kind of hoping everything, all of these things should do just fine. I noticed last night um, when I went out to check our pumpkins to see if I had enough to do this project, um, a lot of them got nipped last night. So we've got a lot of black wilted leaves, just the upper ones or the outer leaves. Uh, dahlias seem fine, but we're heading in to fall guys. I mean, <laughs> we're getting there and it's getting pretty chilly at night. So anyway, I don't know why I got on that tangent, but fun project. Hope you guys enjoyed it. We'll see you in the next video. Bye.